I'm on a three-week trip to Japan, a country about as far away from what I know as it's possible to get. But I'm not here just to observe from the sidelines. If I'm really going to learn about a new culture, I've got to get involved. I, I don't even ever fancy a camera. So I'm here to jump in at the deep end. Put it in my mouth. <laughs> uh, I'm here to go native. I feel like a samurai. I want to get off. It's the last leg of my trip to Japan, and I'm back in Tokyo. So far, I've taken a look at relationships and entertainment in Japan, but now it's time to live the Tokyo lifestyle, the most populated metropolitan area on Earth, where 35 million people coexist, squeezed together like a great big packet of human noodles. Last time I was in Tokyo, I got a glimpse of the claustrophobia, the tiny amount of living space each one of those 35 million people get. But now it's time to live it for real. It's 7.45 on a Monday morning, the start of the average 60-hour working week here. And I'm on my way to meet my translator, Mai. Got to be kidding. At every stop, more get on than get off. Without a word spoken, people push and push and push. It's fucking insane. If there's no more room, so why do people continue to buy along? Look, look, the doors are going to shut. Absolutely insane. Wait for the next train, there are other trains that run all day. Ten minutes later, at Shibuya Station, I can finally breathe again. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The tube in London is bad. So I've just had my first Tokyo tube experience and I don't wish to do that again. People would be backing into me, like forcing their bodies back into me just to make room. And nobody was saying, excuse me, I'm sorry, or it was just happening. If they step on your feet, they'll say sorry. But pushing is just a common sense. And it's, it's a normal thing to do. Otherwise, you could get on the train. And you have to make that train. There's no way around it. You can't wait for the next one. You can't say, do you know what? This train is so busy, there'll be another one along in two minutes. I'll just no, wait. No, just, another one could be even, even busier. Yeah. I had it easy this morning. This is how bad it can get. And at the end of your stressful day of work in Tokyo, and another lovely train journey home, what sort of home do you come home to? Mai takes me to see an average size flat. Right, that's, that's that. Here on the right is, um, that's absurd. Somehow, like the marvels of ergonomics, <clears throat> they've managed to squeeze in bath, shower, sink, toilets, towel rail, all mod cons. There it is, there's the microwave area. I can do my microchips in there, so that I do like my boxes of microchips. And my ring, I do my beans, and I've got my ham or whatnot in the fridge. And that's dinner. Do you love it? Well, no. It's about £700 a month. And also you have to pay two months deposit and two months thank you money to the, uh, to the uh, agent. The estate agent. It is in it. You cannot get the money back. And another th one month thank you money for the landlord. You cannot take that what back. What are you thanking him for? Thank you for letting this out for me. Are you paying him rent? I know, but this is sort of like a Japanese traditional style. So that means just to get a flat, you need six months rent to be ready. Oh, and it's me. not furnished either. Is your flat similar in size to this one? My first flat was sort of like this size. 
How long did you live there? Two years. Oh, my goodness me. It's lunchtime, but in Japan, there's a fast and efficient way of doing everything, even lunch. I've died and gone to vending machine heaven, mine. Vending machines are everywhere, and they don't just sell drinks. How about a hot dog? I think hot dog and chips. Just 80 seconds for a hot dog. Quicker. Yeah. Almost there. Thank you. There we go. That is all. Let's go eat. Hot dog and chips. Do you get used to this? No. It would ultimately drive me crazy if I had guests round. I would have to say, I'm really sorry. I need to go to the toilet. So would you mind just stepping out onto the terrace? Because it's so small in there, I have to leave the door open. These flats look like student accommodation, but everyone I saw was far older. They're not students. These are homes for, for workers, you know? Salary men. <sighs> to be honest, I could only hack that flat for a couple of hours, never mind a couple of years. The streets of Tokyo are still packed in the evenings. Bars are crowded and multi-storey restaurants are doing good business. I get the feeling most people would rather stay out than get a crowded train back to a tiny flat. And if you miss the last train home, there's the option of an even smaller and more cramped night's sleep. It says if you're completely drunk, you're not allowed to be here. Yeah. And if you have tattoos, you're not allowed to be here. And if you are very smelly, you, you cannot be here. How do I smell? All right, then. All right. <laughs> there are hundreds of capsule hotels across Tokyo. They offer a room not much bigger than a coffin for about £25 a night. All you need is just to sleep. And there's a bathroom downstairs, there's a living room down there. So you can chill out there and you just dive in. No. <laughs> I don't think I could, I have to say. I, yeah, I couldn't. I feel like I'm having a CAT scan. Just calm down and lie down a bit. Yeah. <sighs> That's all right, isn't it? No, it's not, my. It's not all right. Tokyo is so busy. Yeah. Lots of people, congested. It's not really the city of choice for the claustrophobe. <laughs> it's not, is it? <laughs> Clearly the Japanese, and Tokyoites in particular, live to work. And as I'm about to find out, the work ethic is instilled into Japanese children at a very young age. And when I say young, I mean young. Down by the docks in Tokyo Harbour, there's a theme park called Kidzania. Its mission is to teach children the joys of a working life. Kidzania is described as an edutainment town. Built two-thirds to scale, it's where children can do shifts of work at over 90 different jobs. They welcome children up to a maximum age of 15, down to a minimum of three. The fire brigade are getting ready for a call-out. The air stewardesses are preparing for the arrival of passengers. The kids in the burger bar kitchens are checking their ingredients. Nurses are about to take charge of a baby each, and the police are getting ready to crack some crimes. It's a walkie-talkie. It's a walkie-talkie. What's the overall ethos of Kidzania? For the most part, I can't help thinking this might be the most exciting place a child could ever come to. Essentially, what strikes me is big toys and big fancy dress, but you're learning something in the process. You've saved us all, so thank you. Did you have fun working for the fire department? Yes. I know you're only three, but do you, do you have an idea what you'd like to do one day when you're grown up? 
both, uh, both my children, they love cars, particularly Harvey, my, my youngest. He, he would love this. So he's only two. Even though he's only two, could he get a job as a mechanic here? How about, let's say this, how about uh, Harvey lied on his application form? I mean, do you do a background check to make sure that my son is both old enough and perhaps just to make sure that he doesn't have any kind of criminal record? At Kidzania, parents cannot be in the same room as their working child. It's a fundamental principle. The declaration is all about promoting independence for the children. How do you uh, feel about that as a... As a, as a parent. At Kidzania, children are paid for each shift of work they do, either five or eight kidzos. How do you make the distinction between what is a five kidzo job and an eight kidzo job? Can you like haggle with the boss in the hamburger store? Like, can you say, listen, I think you should be paying me more. I've done a couple of shifts here. You know, this is this is like child labour. I need to be earning more than this because I've got parents to support. Across the site, children are excitedly going from job to job, and not just the obvious ones. There's a queue a mile long to make burgers and healthy numbers at banking and even maintaining radio masts. They can even have business cards produced to present at forthcoming business meetings. I've noticed, obviously, you have a, a police department. If my little boy came and he wanted, you know, he decided maybe work wasn't necessarily for him, but maybe a life of crime was. Could he maybe, like, steal a car here? Impossible. <laughs> That's impossible in Kizania. It's hard to know whether Kidzania would ever catch on in the UK. It's fun, but it's formative fun. The age of three is an exceptionally young age to start promoting the concept of work and earning a living and money. Of course it is, like we, we, we both know that. When I heard this place for the first time, I thought, why, from at age three, you have to think about working in the future because you know you don't have to worry about it. You're going to end up working really hard anyway. But today I came here and looked at these places and I saw kids looking so active and positive. Their eyes are sort of full of energy and it's a really positive thing. It's not only about work, work, work. No matter what age you start, work, work, work seems to be the Tokyo way of life. And everywhere you look, you can see how relentless this city and the lifestyle that goes with it really are. I'm a few days into my Tokyo life now, and I'm still trying to come to grips with it. I now have my favorite place for noodles. They come in a broth so hot, they bring out the sweats. And getting across the city by subway starts to get a little easier. But in general, Tokyo has a rhythm I just can't seem to find. At the moment, I'm very much out of tune. I'm out of sync with Tokyo. It's a bit like tinnitus. It's white noise. It's white noise. I can honestly say I'm, I'm, I've not fallen in love with it so far, but then I'm not, I'm not a big city boy. I'm a city boy, but I'm not a big city boy, and this is a big city. The lack of space in Tokyo has led to some surreal but flourishing niche businesses. The Japanese love pets. There are more cats and dogs than children here, but many people don't have the space at home to own one. At Puppy the World, you can hire a dog by the hour, which is exactly what I'm here to do. But first, a story. My mum's afraid of dogs. My mum has a lot of phobias, and uh, dogs is one of them. And we went over to my Uncle Dave's, uh, when I was a little boy, and a neighbour had a high gate or a high fence with a doggy sign on the front of the gate. 
think it was a picture of an Alsatian saying, you know, do not enter or whatever. And the gate was open and the dog was out. And the dog came running towards us. And my mum instinctively just, just jumped in the car and left me. And I've been uncomfortable with dogs since, since that day. And I think they, I think dogs can sense fear. Should we go and hire one? Well, no, is the sensible answer to that question. No, let's not hire one because I don't like them. Well in Rome, but I'm, well in, in I'm in Japan, so, uh, you know, I'm here to do things that I would not normally do and hopefully in the, in the process overcome certain fears. So based on that, let's go and hire a f***ing dog. All right, I admit it. My head's not right on this whole dog hire thing. Today, these dogs are standing by. I don't want him. He's got a mole. He looks nasty. I want him. Yes. What's his name? Nobunaga. Nobunaga. That's a very famous uh, uh, samurai name. Nobunaga. Nobunaga. Hello, Nobunaga. Nobunaga. Hello. 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 Konnichiwa. Thank you. Hi. Hang on. All right. Hello. Hello. Oh. So, it's all right, isn't it? He's trying to get away, mine. What about if he poops? Do I have a scoop? Poop a scoop? Yeah. You need to store the plastic bag with tissues. Is there a scoop over? Do you have a glove? Can I use this one? Yeah. You don't know this? Use my hand like that. Mm. I like this. Is there a scoop? Nobu. Are you hungry? Nobu. It's <laughs> completely ignoring me. I can't talk. Well, I can hear you. Mother God, sorry. sorry. What's on my lap? No. I've hired Nobu for three hours, more than enough to get to know each other and we head for Tokyo's man-made beach. Come on, Nobu. Why is dog rental so popular in Japan, Mai? Um, I think it's because um, a lot of flats, if you're renting them out, they're not allowed to, um, to keep a dog in your flat. And also, pets ease you. Not me. <laughs> I can see that. They, yeah, they, they stress me out. They drive me crazy. Uh, it's the op opposite. Really? Yes. Most people, this is a relaxing mm -hmm, experience for very, them. Yeah, yeah. They go and they, they, yes. they have a pet or... It makes me smile. Or people who are maybe they're working hard, they're to de-stress, they go and they rent a dog and it just chills them out for a couple of hours. Yes. Good. Relaxing. Stress level's high in Japan. <laughs> people stress suffer is from big, yes. Stress is big. Particularly in Tokyo. I think so, it's under pressure, working very hard, commuting, you know, really busy train for long hours, yes. The weather turns and rain's expected soon. We head indoors to one of the hundreds of pet clothing boutiques that exist across Tokyo. Everything you could ever want for your pet, and a lot more besides, is here. Right, we need to keep you dry. Right, we can't take you back wet, so we're going to get you this. Is that OK? Mm -hmm. There we go, that's the one. Thank you. That's the one for him. Do you like it? You like it? If he's happy, I'm happy. It seems like Nobu and I are starting to gel. It's my dog. Although it's not all plain sailing. It's all right, I'll do it. There you go. That's my sake. Right, well done. My time with Nobu is up, and he can tell. There's suddenly an extra spring in his step. So much in Tokyo seems to come back to stress and how to cope or not cope with it. For those who can't, there's a special word in Japanese, kuroshi, literally death by overwork. Stress-busting techniques are everywhere, and on an outing in the business district one day, I come across one of the more quirky methods. For a fee, businessmen can smash crockery to ease their tension. After spending a fair bit of time in Tokyo myself now, 
I think this is worth a go. Stand back! Stand back, everybody! I'm very stressed out! I'm going to do a couple of bowls. I'm pissed off! I'm stressed out! Have you got any plates? Okay, okay. Yeah, those. Yes! I'm really, I'm raving mad! Another, another, I'm really pissed off! I'm getting, this, I'm getting more pissed off! I'm more pissed! Okay. One more! Ah, oh, shut up! Get! It's a stressful life, Will. You get stressed. Do you need to physically express it? Yeah. Without punching somebody? Yeah, just boosh, boosh, bosh, bosh. It's only really a short term fix as far as I'm concerned, because Tokyo's pace and lifestyle will always be too frenetic for me. Everyone's going about their business. They're getting up, they're putting on their suits, they're getting onto the, the subway, they're cramming themselves into the subway trains like sardines, they're falling asleep while standing up because they're so tired, they're going to work, they're working all day, well into the night, and then they go back to their tiny flat, or if they've missed the train, they have to go and spend the night in a capsule, and then they get up and they do the same thing all over again. You've got to have somewhere to go. They have to have somewhere to go, because there has to be something else. It's time to escape Tokyo, but as I'm about to learn, getting far from the city doesn't mean all danger is past. I'm coming to the end of my time in Japan, and having been in Tokyo for some time now, it feels good to be getting away from it all. Mai and I are on our way to Hokkaido, the northernmost island of Japan, and the city of Hakodate in particular, one of the most common getaways for the stressed out Tokyo salaryman and his family. Gone is the neon. It's all about farming and fishing up here. Hakodate is considered by those who know about these sorts of things to be home to some of the best fishing grounds and best fish on the planet. We check into an authentic Japanese inn, a ryokan, where guests are encouraged to bathe in volcanic spring water and the rooms are all traditionally styled. Welcome. This is where you come for a hot thermal bath. How perfect is that? That's genuinely lovely. That's really lovely. Looking straight out over the ocean, the tide is coming in. Where is your bed? Well, um, I don't have one. I don't have a bed. I understand that when I leave this space for dinner, shortly, people come and they get rid of this, my, my dining living area, and this is replaced with a futon. That's what I'm led to believe. Dinner is served, and I join Mai in a private dining room for a nine-course traditional banquet. Let's eat. OK. okay. This is sea urchin. Is it fishy? Very fishy, yes. Very fishy. That's not bad. I've never seen food like it. From the sea urchin, via the fish-flavoured jelly. Try. That's no other thing, is it? That's all right. Yeah. It's like it's a fishy smuggle. jelly. And through several courses, that will, to my dying day, always remain a mystery. What's that, Mai? This isn't a standard issue supper for me. I'm already well out of my comfort zone. And then the hairy crab arrives. Maybe I would like that. There's every chance that I would like that. But I just, there's just something saying to me, no. You don't want any of this. This is not for you. Well, I'm not a try anything once kind of guy, you know? You know, people say, yeah, you know, try anything once. Yeah. And, uh, what doesn't kill you can only make you stronger. And I'm more, it might kill you though. That's me, you know? Next morning, Amai and I step out to explore Hakodate. You're never far from fish in this town though, and we visit one of the best fish markets in the world. Unlike Tokyo, everything here is big. 
Wow. So they're all key, oh my goodness me. That's the biggest crab I've ever seen. Look at the size of that. Would you like to hold it? Ah, uh, oh. No. <laughs> Thank you. If I were to purchase that crab, do I take him home alive? You can, of course. But th what if I wanted them to, they would kill him for me to take him home now? Or do you take I like him home alive? Better, no? Is it why? Because it's fresh. If it's really, really dead, yeah. it's not fresh enough. Tucked in the corner of the market, one stall sells whale meat. You know, when I was at school, at the school mill, we had deep fried uh, whale meat. So I never thought there was wrong with it. You know, nothing was wrong with it, and I never thought about it. Because we, we are so poor, especially after the World War II, we couldn't afford to eat chicken or beef, but whales, whale meat was cheaper. And that was supposed to be good for your health. About 30 years ago, the teachers just told us, like, we are not going to have whale meat dishes anymore because the number of the whales is decreasing and we're not allowed to catch anymore. Right. So uh, that disappeared completely. So that means young people in Japan, many of them have never tried whales. Maybe it's the younger population of Japan that think that whaling should be stopped. Young Japanese people think that, why do they bother? You know, we have many other things to eat. That's their opinion. Right. But the fishermen, local fishermen, and there are some villages where they still um, hunt whales, those fishermen are supposed to be elite. And also, those villages are living on the whales. The sale of whale meat. Yeah, and right. if they stop hunting whales, there's no other industry. Oh, squid biscuit. A squid flavoured biscuit? Or is it just <laughs> shape No, biscuit? it's just shape of oh, the. Right. But this one has the uh, squid ink in it. In Hakodate, the star of the show is the humble squid, and the city's signature dish is squid sashimi, super fresh raw squid. In the centre of the market sits a large tank where customers can fish for their lunch. Unfortunately, it's lunchtime. Oh! Oh my goodness! What was that? What was that? Hey! Yeah, he's the... Oh my yes. goodness me! Hi, Ayatozaimas! Okay, your turn next. Is that normal? What was it doing? <laughs> Squid. Uh, uh, yes! Ah, we get off! Oh, ah. man! All right, come on. Oh, man! <laughs> oh, don't look at me. Ah. Get in the bucket, man. Get in the bucket, man. Oh, man! <laughs> All right, bye. All right, bye. All right. Oh, he's got a big face. He's got a big face. All right? Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> they had a massive face and great big eyes looking at me. Get over it. All right. Catching your squid is only the beginning, though, because after that, there's a sweet-looking lady at a kiosk ready to prepare it for you. Oh. oh I'm such a wimp. I'm <laughs> such a massive wimp. Oh, he's still moving around there. I'm not putting anything that's still moving in my mouth, I'll tell you that now, Mike. Ah, OK. If it's still moving, it's just a basic rule of thumb that I have. Oh, if it no. moves, don't eat it. Mm. I'm not going to eat anything that's moving, I'm sorry. It won't be moving, though, will it? Let's see. If... Look, it's moving. I'm not going to eat if it's moving, Mike. That's not right. But because it's squid and it's just fish, fish is food for us. I know, I know, I know. Well, fish is food for us, too. You know, we, we eat fish. Mm. I, I love fish. It's still moving, my. <laughs> and that's what I, I can't quite get my head around. I mean, clearly, I've, I've watched, I'm watching the process. I understand why it's still moving. I, I can't get my no, head no, around wanting to put it in my mouth. Look. Hey, touch of ginger. Ginger good? Final touch. It is still moving, though, my. It's not moving. No, it is, my. Look, my. It, <laughs> no, see? Look. <laughs> That's no look my look see it's twitching. It's twitching. She says if you put it in the soy sauce, 
it moves even more because it's salt. Let's check that mine. Because I'm not going to be in anything that moves. I'll show you. I'll eat the lovely, lovely uh, sweet bit that doesn't move. Oh, there's the soy sauce. Right, so this is going to start kicking around when you put it in the soy sauce, is it? Oh, this is a bit too much. It's a bit too much to me too. That's too much for you too. You're not going to go there. That's too cheeky. That's too cheeky, isn't it? That's too cheeky. Yeah, what's it? What's it? Hi, 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 hi. How is it? It's horrible. I'm I'm still eating it. It's so delicious. 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 It's are you still chewing it? <laughs> oh, OK. Despite the squid sashimi, I can see why places like Hakodate are a welcome and vital rest for stressed workers. I'm back in Tokyo for my last few days in Japan and decide to go to a place visited by many for whom the stress has become too much to bear. Just outside the city, in the shadow of Mount Fuji, is a forest called Aokigahara. My translator for the day, Junko and I, have an appointment with a guide who will take us in. Is it easy to get lost yeah. to the point where you wouldn't be able to find your way back? Mm. It's a huge forest, 37 square kilometers, but its fame throughout Japan is not because of its size. Its nickname is Kuroi Jukai, or Black Sea of Trees, and it's here that many Japanese people take their own lives. What is it about this place that draws people here to do what they do? Well, why do they not want to be found? Our guide, Mr. Kawamura, clears the path of cobwebs as we head into the forest. The suicide rate in Japan is almost three times that of the UK. It's the leading cause of death for Japanese men and women in their 20s and 30s. How many people every year do you think come here to commit suicide and how many of those people are successful? で、日本計算で90人ぐらいになると思うんですけど、まあ、そのうち1人と計算して、まあ、1日1人ですから年間でまあ300、560人っていうふうには思うんですけど、この活動を始めたのが去年の9月なんですけど、その今10ヶ月
、まあ、こう、山を歩くように、似合わないような格好っていうんですかね。Can you physically restrain them? 明らかに、まあ、本当は自殺しに来たんじゃないかって思っても、こう、そう、ほっといてくれって言われたりすると、うちの強制力がないので、警察でもないので、そう意思のない方は拘束することができないんですよ。あとこういうまあ声をかけて自殺防止の運動をしてるっていうことも載ってるらしいんですよ。だあえてまあそういう自殺しに来たって言ってもこう明るく振る舞っていればそういう気じゃない悟られないっていうまあそういうサイトっていうんですかね。実際に見たことないからわかんないんですけど。でも実際にそういう来た人でそういう人がいたのでちょ,ちょっとすいませんお客さんすいませんちょっとお話しさせてくださいちょっとお話しさせてくださいちょっとお話しさせてくださいちょっとお話She has a map in her hand, Junko, but she. She's certainly not dressed for a hike, that's for sure. He was, he was on her straight away, wasn't he? The second he saw her. So he obviously thinks that. She's okay. Um, okay? Yes, okay. And is that, was that girl lost or is she just out for a quiet stroll? What's happening there? For example, one of the girls was a girl who 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 was a girl. Would you go back and follow her, her trail later on just to, to make sure that she's okay or are you happy just to completely leave it now? この先行くと野鳥の森公園っていうのがあるんですけど、でそちらの方に確認は取りますけどね。And does it still slightly trouble you in any way that she's gone off on her own? ほぼ完全に安心ということはないですけど I have one more day in Japan, and there's one final stop to make. Karaoke is now a global cliché, but in the country of its birth, there's a side to karaoke that I would never have expected. It's my last full day in Japan. My translator Mai knows that karaoke is close to my heart, and she has a treat for me. A little later, We arrive in a quiet and unfashionable quarter of Tokyo at an old people's daycare center. They call them silver clubs, so they can see each other like once a week and yeah. just check, are you okay? Of course. You know, how's it going? Yeah. So that's a good thing to make you live longer. I've got some biscuits. Yeah, so give it to them. At the Toyotama Elderly Center, Wednesdays are karaoke day, and even though it's coming up to 11 a.m., The session has already been going for two hours. Konnichiwa. Thank you. After this, they're going to stop the music. Yes. And you say hello to them. They say hello to you. Okay. Uh, my name is Justin, and thank you very much for having me、um, here today at your karaoke session. I'm a, I'm a big fan of karaoke. I'm the karaoke king.
It is a wonderful sight, a room full of music and togetherness, and a powerful reminder of one of the most fundamental Japanese beliefs. The group is always more important than the individual. Here, karaoke means singing for others, not for yourself. I'm busy trying to find the right song to sing when out of the blue I'm suddenly one half of a duet and the song's already been chosen the Tennessee waltz isn't one I know well but let's not worry about that I remember the and the Tennessee waltz now I just how much I have lost Yes, I lost my little darling The lovely worrying After three weeks in Japan, I've inadvertently found the warmest and most life-affirming Japanese scene. Regrets? I've had a few. As the clock hits 12, the session is coming to a close. And as a final opportunity to turn Japanese, I'm asked to sing the last song. What I had to do and sort through without exemption to think I did all that. And may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way. For what is a man, what has he got, if not himself? Then he has not to say the things he truly feels And not the words of one who kneels The record shows I took the blows and did it my Thank you very much. I've in, enjoyed myself immensely. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be part of your, of your day. You have not only made my day, but you have made my trip to Japan. Thank you. I will um, do one quick thing. I will, I will go back home to England uh, a very happy man, and I will never forget this experience. Thank you. Arigato. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Arigato. Such a fantastic series, and Justin gets to ask even more intriguing questions early next week when he spends some personal time with a man of action, a Hollywood hero... Steven Seagal versus Justin Lee Collins, brand new, Monday at 10 here on Channel 5. Though, next tonight, another legend, Mr Sean Connery, stars in a thrilling climax to Thursday night, Just Cause, after the break.